Thank you. Yes, it has been an adventure to get here. Um, anyways, so what I'm going to do is give you a, a brief update and overview of Bolibimab, its clinical development, a little bit of its mechanism of action, rationale, and some of uh, the results that we've seen. So bolivimab is a bliss specific uh, inhibitor. The target is bliss, which stands for B lymphocyte stimulator. And what it is is a trimeric um, soluble protein. Whoops, there are three, uh, what are called homotrimers, three similar or identical components. When the three come together, um, they make up the biologically active bliss. Uh, this bliss can bind to one of three receptors only on, on B cells, and when the bliss binds to the receptor is when it, it induces its biological activity, which is to promote B cell growth, differentiation, meaning replication, um, and then the cells either become antibody-producing cells or autoantibody-producing cells, and it's also important in the survival of, of the cells. Uh, the cells can also become memory B cells, which are the cells that remember, like when you have a vaccination or an encounter with an infectious agent. So the mechanism of action is once an antigen or, or a foreign bacteria or virus would stimulate what are called monocytes, they're white blood cells, um, or neutrophils and other type of white blood cells, then they produce a bliss, secrete it to the membrane, the outer surface of the cell, and there it is cleaved, and that's when it becomes biologically uh, active at this point, and then it binds to the receptors on the B cells, and that's when it induces its biological activity to, again, to uh, differentiate, to become either antibody, autoantibody, or um, memory B cells. So the rationale for developing um, a molecule that will block this biological activity is several fold. Uh, some of them where there were mouse models that had sustained high levels of bliss, they would develop a lupus-like um, autoimmune uh, symptoms or even long-term things such as Sjogren's. Uh, when they were given anti-bliss therapy, uh, this improved the disease and the survival of those mice. Uh, it has been long known that B cells and autoantibodies, those are the antibodies that bind to your own tissue and then induce inflammation, uh, can be central to the development of many autoimmune diseases, including lupus, and that elevated levels of bliss in the blood correlate with elevated uh, lupus disease activity. So what bolivimab is, is it's a fully human monoclonal antibody that selectively targets and inhibits the biological activity of bliss by binding to it. And the inhibition of the bliss can then um, result in that the autoreactive, the, the B cells and plasma cells that are producing autoantibodies, that they will pr preferentially uh, die um, over the normal B cells. So the uh, clinical development program for bolibumab has been quite extensive. Uh, just as Joan was saying, the, the timing of this uh, was discovered in 1999. Our first phase one trial in 70 patients began in 2001. Um, the phase two, which was a dose ranging uh, study, which at that point in time was the largest uh, randomized clinical controlled trial in lupus, started in October of 2003. And then the lessons learned from that study were applied into the design and the development of a primary endpoint for our phase uh, three studies, the two of which are, are shown on the bottom, which were large studies um, of over 800 patients and which are the largest completed randomized controlled trials to date in, in lupus. So the phase three uh, clinical program, which we, we started out in, in 2006 and was fully enrolled in 2008, uh, in pro comprised nearly 1,700 patients in 223 investigative sites in 31 countries. The, there were two trials. One was BLISS 52, which was 52 weeks long. That was done primarily in Asia Pacific and Latin America. And BLISS 76, which was 76 weeks long, um, was done primarily in North America and Western and Central Europe. 
The trial design of both of these studies was basically identical except for the, the length of the trial. In both studies, the primary endpoint was at 52 weeks. The patients had to come in with active SLE as designated by one of the um, better known disease activity scales, Selena Sleedi, such that they would have moderate to severe disease activity. They had to be autoantibody positive. They had to be on stable therapy, and this was basically a global standard of care therapy done across the world for at least 30 days, and they couldn't have severe uh, kidney lupus or central nervous system uh, lupus. The uh, dosing occurred uh, by one hour infusion every month uh, for the entire trial, except for the first month where an extra dose is given to achieve um, steady state blood levels faster. Oops, I should go back. So the trial design was in one trial, 865 were randomized. That was BLISS 52 and 819 and BLISS 76. And they were randomized into one of three treatment arms, placebo plus the global standard of care, um, or bolivimab, either one milligram per kilogram or 10 milligrams per kilogram um, plus standard of care. So this was a superiority trial design to show that um, bolivimab was superior to standard of care. The primary endpoint was derived by a post hoc analysis of our phase two trial, which wasn't, did not meet its primary endpoints, but in that trial, uh, we did learn uh, several lessons, one on clinical trial design and to develop this primary endpoint, and what we call it is SLE responder index where to show reduction in disease activity, you have to have at least a four-point improvement in Selena Sleet Eye, uh, and this is considered clinically significant. In the Selena Sleet Eye, to get improvement, you have to eliminate the sign or symptom or normalize the, the laboratory abnormality to have a uh, reduction in points. And then to be sure that the improvement did not come with worsening in other organ systems, we use the BILAG uh, disease activity scale to show that there was no worsening in other organ domains and then also the PGA stands for Physicians Global Assessment is that the physician said there was no worsening uh, overall. So if a person had the improvement and no worsening then they were considered a responder and they had to f finish the 52 weeks of the study. So the primus, primary endpoints of both trials are shown with it being the SLE responder index. And in both studies, the 10 milligram per kilogram was statistically significantly better than the uh, placebo. So that in the BLISS 52 trial that was reported first, it was 58 versus 44 percent. In BLISS 76, it was 43 versus 33 percent. In these trial, the two trials, only the 10 met the primary endpoint for both doses. The one was only statistically significant in uh, the first trial. I'm just going to show you a few other um, bits of the results to show that other uh, things that uh, bolivimab had some activity besides this responder index. So you can also measure flares um, by, again, the Selena Sleet eye. And what this just shows is the rate of flares on this axis. And this is the placebo group. So you can see that about by the end of uh, one year, 23% of the people have had a severe flare, where then the, or the purplish, uh, only 13.8% of the patients had a flare that's statistically significantly less or what the hazard ratio just means is there was a 43% reduction in the risk of having a severe flare over one year in patients on the high dose of bolivimab plus standard of care compared to placebo plus standard of care. And then another thing that we looked at that uh, I know is important to patients is fatigue. So facet fatigue is a uh, validated measure of fatigue and what this is showing is that the high dose of bolivimab was able to have significant reductions of fatigue as early as eight weeks and was sustained um, out one year and was significantly greater than the standard of care at uh, several time points. Uh, 
um, consistent with the mechanism of action of bilibumab. So I said it, it has an impact on cells that develop into producing antibodies and those that produce autoantibodies. So double-stranded DNA, antibodies to double-stranded DNA are one of the, the more common uh, autoantibodies that exist that, that are often associated with renal and many um, some other manifestations of lupus. And what you can see is that there's a rapid uh, decline in the uh, double-stranded DNA from the first eight weeks, and it's about 40% versus 12% at the end of one year. As far as safety goes, in both trials, the safety profile has been good. There has been no significant difference between the bolibumab arms and the standard of care in uh, serious adverse events, severe adverse events, reasons for discontinuations, deaths, um, or significant lab abnormalities. So in summary, um, as Joan said, these were the first uh, phase three trials that actually met their primary endpoint. Um, and the 10 milligram per kilogram dose was the dose that was met its primary endpoint in the SLE responder index in both trials. This is the, the dose that we have proposed to regulatory agencies to be uh, approved. Uh, Bolivimab has shown a reduction of disease activity in autoantibodies. I showed you that data. Also, it can reduce severe flare and fatigue. It was generally well tolerated with a global standard of care. And we did submit um, regulatory packages to both the FDA and to the European regulatory authorities uh, in the first part of June for approval for the treatment of lupus. Thank you for your attention.